Siobhan Monique. Hey, Siobhan. Hey, y'all. Oh, my goodness. You <laughs> look so fabulous, as Thank always. You. As do you. You're always serving looks, though. Like, how do you how do you get your inspiration to kind of when you're coming up with what you want to how you want to present yourself? Well, the basis of my inspiration, it stemmed from pain. A lot of my art and my creativity stem from that. And I'm saying pain in a way as growing up as a little black girl. For me, my experience was your nose is too big. Your skin is too dark. Speak a little quieter. Don't speak so loudly. Don't do this. So the construct of society, for me, my experience, tried to shape and mold me to be a certain way. And as I become older and I was able to break free from that, I'm really able to embrace all that is me. So from that pain, from the experience of this is the way that you should be, once I broke free from that and I embrace who I am, now all of the beauty that you see and the looks and the designs come from who I am, who I say I should be. That's the inspiration. So thank you, society. You tried, but you failed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I love that you said that because I, I think people don't necessarily always see the journey to get to, you know, the look the or looking. Top. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Exactly. So um, I have so much I want to talk to you about, but let's talk. if you, you know, let's start with, are you, are, are you originally from St. Pete, Tampa area? Are you uh, a long-term local? I am a long-term local. I am the daughter of St. Petersburg, Florida, Florida, the holy city. Um, I am born and raised here. My parents were born here. Um, so yes, and I am it's such a privilege and an honor to be able to represent St. Petersburg, Florida, to be considered the daughter of St. Petersburg, Florida, because of all of the creativity and the culture and the dynamic of this city. It is, it's a magical place. And this is where I'm from. And now you do so much. You are a performer, you are an entrepreneur, you have you're planning events, you're doing so many different things. Where did that kind of drive and creativity come from? So my grandfather, Steve Cooper, and my uncle, Buster Cooper, were um, original members of the Duke Ellington Jazz Band. And so I have been listening to jazz music since I was in my mother's womb. Um, and that is, where it comes from for me. You know, I was cut from that cloth. And at what, 12 years old, while other 12 year olds are in bed asleep at a certain time, preparing for school the next day, they've got their homework and everything and they book pack, they're ready, they got their snacks for lunch and the whole night. I am downtown, St. Petersburg, Florida, at the garden, standing on top of a table because I'm so short and people need to see me singing Ella Fitzgerald, Gerald, Lady is a Tramp. At 12. Yes. I should be in bed at 1130. <laughs> I'm 12 years old. You had to perform so I, for the people. I, you gotta, you gotta do it for people. <laughs> so, so my childhood experience was filled with music and heavily influenced by the greats. And I had the opportunity and chance to sing. I didn't even realize at the time the beauty of what was taking place. I was singing at 12 years old in front of a jazz band, a seasoned jazz band at 12. The journey. The it's journey. coming to the next album, it's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey. Featuring Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of where it started, but I love that you're also just so curious and you, know, you, you venture into all different genres. There's really no kind of um boundary that you set for yourself you know you no. well first I want to say to any artist or any you know person that is meant to receive this message 
do not set boundaries on anything that you do because it's gonna diminish your light. It will hinder, slow down and or stop the process. Do not set boundaries on yourself. And when you release the boundaries, now you need to have boundaries with other people, but that's another conversation for another time. <laughs> I usually charge exactly. 20 an hour, you know, you can come and sit on my couch <laughs> and I'll, you can set boundaries with others, but don't limit yourself. And my music, I consider it ancestral funk. It is the voices of my ancestors. It is the sound of the fiber of my being, of my culture, of where I come from. And that sound cannot be limited into a genre of music, such as R&B, classical, funk, pop, rock, jazz, gospel. It can't be limited into a box because music is universal and it heals the soul. It is the one thing that anyone can hear from any different language or wherever you come from and still be able to connect with it. It's what unifies us all together. That's you such a great lesson. And, you know, I think sometimes we just put these boundaries on ourselves and don't even realize we're doing it. No. And to have that kind of self-awareness and, and kind of checking in and be like, why am I limiting myself? I think right. that's such a great lesson that you um, are kind of sharing. So I want to talk about some of your current projects. This past okay. weekend was Motherland which speaking of St. Pete and all of the different, I feel like that was like St. Pete in an event. Like you had everything. You had yes. all different styles and genres and types of talking about no boundaries too. Right. So tell me a little bit about it and, and how did it go? Well, Motherland came to me as a vision from God. And it's very important um, as an individual that you have a connection to something that is greater than yourself. Um, and something that... A, unlocks and unleashes your highest self purpose being so have a connection with something greater you can call it god whatever religion you want to attach it to but we are all a part of something greater and when we realize that then we're able to communicate and connect on such a high vibrational level that you will receive visions that will help you fulfill your purpose and so for me, Motherland came to me as a vision. It was something that I wanted to do for my community and my city. And I'm the daughter of the Holy City. I'm the daughter of St. Pete. I need to give back to where to what made me. So many artists, they go and they travel and they try to pour into or um, give to other um, places that they weren't born and raised in, but it's very important for you to start at the root. And so I wanted to give back a festival for my community that was filled with culture because I feel like um, race and culture and this society, it divides us, but the differences should actually bring us together. There are certain things that I appreciate about Asian culture, African culture, um, different European cultures that it's so specifically designed to them that they it is, it is done so well. It, it should be embraced. It shouldn't be a difference that's like, mm -mm, I can't do mm. It shouldn't divide us. So I wanted to create a festival where all of those cultures can come together and their differences can unify and not mm. divide. And so motherland stem from that desire to do that for my city and it is the return it's the renewal it's the release from the artist standpoint this was the first time that I did anything on this level this is the first time that I you know cultivated and created this so there were so many learning experiences for me to be able to like they say iron sharpens iron it was so many learning experiences for me that occurred that the next time I do it it's just it's only going to grow into a much more beautiful beautiful um experience and it is like the gift that keeps on giving from the vendors to the street performers to the band to the opening acts to the dj and everyone that was involved it created um, such a beautiful vision for what's to come. 
And I'm appreciative of everyone that was involved. And I love you all eternally, if you're watching this, for everybody who came and participated and, and, and were a part of this experience. It was beautiful. It was an, it made an impact. It made it, if my dress didn't make an impact, baby. Okay, because y'all should have just came for the dress, honey. <laughs> so. There were many impacts. It was. And that was that was that was top three was the dress, honey. <laughs> and I had an LED cape. Oh, forget about it. I'll send you some pictures. And if you're not busy enough, you also have a new song out. I have a new song. My album will also be releasing on the 12th this month oh my um, goodness that is this friday that is i'm moving too fast i ain't even <laughs> been working on this for so long it's finally here yes my album jane doe will be, will be released on all streaming platforms on the 12th oh my goodness Christ, of november so early it sure did it's the gift that keeps on giving baby it's the journey <laughs> featuring zachary Hahn. the journey <laughs> That'll be on the deluxe edition. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So tell me about Jane Doe. What can we expect when we give it a listen on Friday? So Emergency, which is out now, which is my single that you can um, listen to on all streaming platforms as well. I have a music video for that. I'm sure you'll be showing the people that very soon, but it is on Vivo. It is entitled Emergency. That is a single for the album. Jane Doe for me is, once again, here we come, full circle. It's the journey. Um, it is, um, the music is reflective of my life, the things that I've learned, uh, the things that I've been through, the things that I've overcome, those differences that I was talking about with the cultural experiences that unify us and I've shared with other individuals. And then it's things that are uplifting to let the people know, like, you have to keep going. Do not limit yourself. Do not set boundaries on yourself. So it's titled Jane Doe because I couldn't give it. A title. It has so many different components and textures and grit and happiness and joy and that I couldn't title it and name it just one name. So I entitled it Jane Doe for two reasons. The first reason is the, the listener. However the music speaks to you, whatever the music means to you, however it impacts you, you title the album. You give it a name. It will be unidentified mm. until it is something that you connect with and that you can name. On the second point of Jane Doe, the reason that I entitled it that is because I am very appreciative, grateful, um, and honored to have ancestors that love me so much and protect me so much that they have been with me every step of this journey. And I entitled it Jane Doe because there are ancestors that I may never know their names or see their faces, but they prayed for me. They made a way for me. They were doing things at that time that set the stage for where I am now. So for those ancestors of mine that I don't know, may never see or hear, this is for you, Jane Doe. A faceless mm -hmm. face and a nameless name. This is this is for you. I'm having a performance um, at the Ale and Witch in December, and then I'm having another performance at the Estate downtown St. Pete in January. So, for any and all updates on what I will be doing, um, merchandise. We have a Pay It Forward campaign. I am the spokesperson for a nonprofit called Race Without Ism. Um, it promotes the unification through diversity. And it focuses on the fact that we are all one human race. So that's where we take the ism part out. It's race without ism. Um, any and all updates that you um, would like to receive can come from my website, which is ancestralfunk.com. situation is getting too complicated 
Your lack of communication creates an altercation that produces separation. People search and find love to catch a high. Keep on climbing broken ladders, breaking hearts to find out what's inside. inside. It was never really in our plans, but we let too many hands tell our story and write our truth. Though you don't really understand, got the paper and the pen, this is the story that I'm writing you. Tired of telling fights, fight we had was fatal, intoxicated with your lies, but in your eyes I see just what's in, in your eyes I see just what's in, in your eyes. I see just what's inside Tired of telling fights Fight we had was fatal Intoxicated with your lies But in your eyes I see just what's in In your eyes I see just what's in In your eyes I see just what's inside Breaking hearts to find out what's inside. Ain't no need to hide. Tired of telling fights. Fight. fight we had was fight. Intoxicated with your lies, but in your eyes I see just what's in. In your eyes I see just what's inside. What's Hey, TTRLers, I am here with Ray Roa, Creative Loafing Tampa's Editor-in-Chief, and he is on a roof. Where are you? Of uh, the CL offices, uh, which are on the second floor here at the floor East Anderson. Below us is the former uh, Hall on Franklin, soon to be um, a new food hall, um, Hawkers, um, not affiliated with St. Pete. Um, but they're, uh, I guess I could say it, they're doing some demo downstairs. Looks like things are going. So hope to see that place open soon. And just in time for some uh, Michelin star rating. I know. Yeah. So that's kind of big news. I was in last week's issue. Uh, uh, the Michelin Guide is coming to Tampa specifically. Other cities, Florida, Maryland, and Miami. Uh, we'll be skipping St. Pete and Clearwater for reasons that are specifically unknown uh, plans to kind of look into that kind of start talking with um, Daniel Guess, um, who's been writing some food stuff for us. And, and I believe he may explore that for us, but that remains to be seen. Uh, we do hope to kind of figure that out, but that's exciting stuff uh, for a lot of restaurants in Tampa to aspire to have a Michelin star. It's a lot of pressure, I think, involved in uh, having a Michelin star. So what can we uh, look forward to in this week's issue? So yeah, so Hideaway um, is closing at some point, uh, but the spoiler is that John Kelly, uh, who Eric caught up with, uh, is looking for a new place actively. And uh, so that's good news for the artists, so many of them that he kind of nurtured, even fed there. There's a kitchen there. He records the music John Kelly does. Um, it's just a really special venue. You know, change is tough sometimes. Hideaway is, is one of those local treasures. So I hope that um, you know, I feel like New World uh, was able, is a good example of, you know, it was really sad to see them leave their original place in Tampa, but have created something just as great, if not better. So 
hopefully the hideaway will be able to um, create something new and, and great and follow in that tradition. Yeah, yeah. you know, and you saying it that way, you know, it makes me, I tend, my first reaction is always anger. You know? Yeah, me too. <laughs> like that is, uh, as long as I guess the same people are involved somewhere within the city at a fair price, I guess it'll always, you'll always have the opportunity to have that great experience. And I hope that the people don't get pushed out. It's great to see that John is going to continue on um, and um, other venues have, obviously other venues haven't, but I guess if the people can continue to do their thing, then, uh, you know, the local arts, specifically the music scene can have a chance. And of course, there's always tons of small shows happening, house shows, DIY shows. Um, I feel like a broken record, and but, you know, you're doing such a good job programming uh, the Riverwalk stuff and making sure that's locally driven truly some of my favorite bands ever have played there in the past gosh six weeks you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> so um this is, you know there's still that opportunity so it's great that there's still places like yours and other places that are showcasing local artists to play their original work mm -hmm.